I am in recovery right now. I need to let you know. Um, I did pick up COVID. <laughs> okay, it finally caught up with me when I was in New Orleans. And um, so I'm a little bit hoarse from that. It's feeling a lot better. But just wanted to let you know if I have to cut out a little bit early today, it's just so I can give this a rest. Um, doing well, though, in recovery mode. Um, had a couple solid days to just sleep once I got back. Um, being, I'm just very thankful for the vaccinations and all to kind of, you know, moderate this thing. No matter what you think, um, sorry, <laughs> I'm not trying to start anything there, but um, I'm really glad that I did not have the full blown that I know some of you have experienced. And um, I just can't imagine. Um, again, very mild for me. Um, the biggest thing right now is just stamina, just, just being, just getting really tired from doing nothing and, um, uh, and just, just a little bit of a struggle. I've got my honey mixed with a little bit of tea right here. Keep me going in my official crochet, let's see my official crochet cup. Um, so anyway, let me just dig in and say, Hey, to you guys so much to share with you. I've got I've got a bag of stuff here to show you from the conference and some stuff all over in front of me here. It's it's a it's just a mess. It's a glorious mess. So I'm looking forward to showing you some of that ah, paper bag showing. Oh well. All right, Sandra, thank you for being here and being the first one to um, add to our chat today. And Leon, I'm so glad um, that your move to sunny Aldershot, just outside of London, went well. Um, he's our friend from the Isle of Wight, I believe, and uh, I still want to go there. And um, so glad that that went well. I know what a chore that can be after having just helped my son, um, sort of helped him to relocate to uh, to to down to somewhere in Georgia, down south. But um, oh, thank you so much, Archer Nace. Um, oh my goodness, you've just pushed us over. I am not prepared. I think, let me just check to see what the stats were. It's two weeks since we've been together. So, um, do, let me look, 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 look. Yep, it looks like you pushed us to 110. So, we are going to have to do a song or something next week. I'm hoping this throat will be better. Um, part of Part of my my uh, throat thing too is when I was at the conference, I taught. <coughs> excuse me. Taught for like twenty hours and appear in a very short period of time. It, that's a lot of talking, even for me. Um, answering a lot of questions, and that doesn't include meeting people and talking to people outside of the class. So, it was. Even if I didn't catch this COVID thing, I, I think the throat probably would have said bye-bye for a while. Um, lots and lots of greeting and, and, and just meeting you guys. It was just so much fun. Probably too much fun packed into a short time. But if you've never been, let me go ahead and talk about CGOA a minute. If you've never been to a crochet conference of any kind or a crafting conference, I know some people have been to quilting conferences and stuff like that. Um, I don't know how that compares, but I do know the generous spirits and the wonderful hearts of, of my crochet pals. And I'm of the mindset that it'd be hard to surpass that. I, I have been in groups of knitters and, and that's been fine. Nothing against knitters or anything like that, but crocheters just rock it when it comes to having fun and being kind to each other. I don't think we it's just it's just a really really good group and even though these these people let me say everybody's coming from different world views different ideas we don't talk politics at least i didn't when we go to these things we stick to the craft very positive interaction so you don't have to fear you know all that other gunk that's that's checked at the door or at least in my circles in my classrooms we don't do stuff like that we just focus on the craft and encourage one another and, and we just had a wonderful time I've had people ask me about joining CGOA. Um, I just wanted to say a couple things about CGOA, which is the acronym for Crochet Guild of America. You don't have to join to attend the conferences. You don't have to join to participate in any of the online classes or activities either. And I have taught many classes online through CGOA 
over the you know, during the pandemic years. Um, I will tell you it costs about $40 a year. And as part of that $40, you do get four copies of the crochet magazine, which is oftentimes available on the newsstand. So in, in that sense, the, the, um, the membership just about pays for itself with that publication. But beyond that, if you do decide to attend conferences, you do get discounts and you get discounts for the classes online. Um, if you're looking to grow your crochet business, you don't have to be business oriented. It can just be you just love the craft, I promise. But if you're looking to grow a business and you're looking for a mentor, um, I do mentorship through the CGOA. Of course, I answer people's questions all the time freely. Um, but there is a program where you can be, be um, placed with another crochet professional who can kind of encourage you and, um, you know, coach you through through what you want to do with your business. Um, so I just want to let people know that because people were asking about whether you have to join and do you have to be a member of a local guild? I have never been a member of a local guild because there aren't local guilds um, in my area. But I have joined the National Guild and that's I have so many friends through that, that's fine. But if you're even um, an administratively gifted person and you want to start a local CGOA, CGOA chapter, in your area for crafters in your area you you can do that it, it doesn't take a lot so i just thought i'd throw that out there i do have a link i believe in the video description below should you be interested it's just crochet.org is the um i'll go ahead and put this in the group chat okay so that is the um the link i believe to the Crochet Guild of America. Well, let me get back to saying hey to some of y'all before this voice totally goes. Alana, I'm so glad that you could join us. Um, and she wants to know, did I have a good time in New Orleans? Oh, yeah, I did. Um, mostly stayed at the hotel, except on the very last day. I was able to go out and see a little bit of the town on Sunday. That was the only day that I honestly didn't have work or something to do. Ah, that tastes so good. I think I dumped about a half a cup of honey in this cup so I can get through this. Um, we have Judy from Lindstrom, Minnesota. Yay. And Sheila and Love to Craft. It's good to have you in, in our chat today. And again, Archer Nace, thank you so much for your generosity. Um, Archer Nace from Cleveland, Ohio. She says where it's warm and muggy. And looking forward to meeting you too. I'm really looking forward to Pennsylvania, uh, Pittsburgh. And I'll go ahead and mention that. Um, I will be teaching in at the Pittsburgh Creative Arts Festival. And this is going to be at the Double Tree by Hilton in Green Tree, Pennsylvania. August 25th through the 27th. I'll be teaching three classes. I'm not even going to try talking about them. I'll let you look at the video description. Um, but I do have three classes. They are filling up. So classes are starting to starting to fill for the entire festival. So you might want to check them out if you're in that area. They're much more economically priced than, I've, than anywhere I've taught. I think it's only like $35 for the class, which is unbelievably cheap. So... If that's something you're looking to do, definitely check that out. Um, I did mention um, several weeks ago that I was going to be attending the, um, the Pitch and Stitch or Stitch and Pitch, which is the 21st, I believe it is. I am going to have to change on that. I feel like I need more time to recover. And um, the last thing I want to do is pick up this COVID again just prior to a conference. So. I'm going to be laying low until the conference or, or until the um, Creative Arts Festival in Pittsburgh. So if I misled any of you on getting tickets, I am so sorry. I did not plan this, um, this chapter, um, but I do have one ticket available. I would like to give my ticket to somebody who is in that area who would like to attend and maybe for whatever reason couldn't afford to or um, you just hadn't thought about it. You can contact me at bonniebay at me.com and, and quite frankly, the first contact that I get 
um, referencing the stitch and pitch. I will gladly send you my ticket information. Um, it's something you can just keep on your phone and it'll get you through the gate. It shouldn't be a problem. I'll contact the organization just to make sure that's not a problem to transfer it. Um, but again, anybody in the Pittsburgh area um, hoping to go to that Pirates Reds game, I, I'm an old time Reds fan. I, I really wanted to see and spend time with you guys there. But I, I thought it was at the end of the conference, not the weekend before. So it would involve me traveling to Pittsburgh twice within the week and coming off of, of COVID from this last trip, I don't feel like I need to be pushing it too much. I may not have the energy to do all of that. So, um, so anyway, anybody, the first person in my email that contacts me regarding that, that's interested, um, let me know. The ticket is yours. It's like, it's about a 29 to $33 value, depending on how much they charge you for your tax and, and all that. So um, this will be free to you. I can just send it to you and um, you can go to the Stitch and Pitch and have a great time watching the game. <coughs> Excuse me again. All right. Um, Michelle says, it's a beautiful day in Helena, Montana. That's fantastic. Hey, Angie, it's good to have you in our chat. And Red Hook is in our chat. Says, hello, everyone. On vacation in hot, sunny Florida. Enjoy my home state, my friend. I grew up down there in hot, sunny Florida. And about the middle of the winter, I really miss hot, sunny Florida. Um, we have Brenda Mack in our chat from sunny and warm Idaho. And um, let's see. She says, getting ready to send five baby blankets to Project Linus. How, how sweet of you to do that. Decided to use July to use up all my baby yarn and have just about accomplished it. Pity, now I have to buy more. I was thinking that in the back of my head. Yeah, now you're going to have to go out and buy some more, Brenda. Um, what a pity. <laughs> Isn't that fun? I mean, I think part of the fun of crafting is just being able to buy yarn. Um and for the record, I didn't buy any yarn at the market this this past conference. Uh, I did get some comp yarn for a project I'm going to show you in just a minute, but um, I didn't buy any because I didn't have time to really to really hunt and look. And I did get smitten by some yarn, and then we decided with the Indie Dyer that we're going to collaborate on something. So technically, I guess you can say I bought this yarn, but I really didn't. But anyway. Let me just go ahead and show that to you now. Um, uh, let me show you their card, too. Put that there. It's by this company, Lether Company. And um, they were really, really nice, nice young couple to talk to. And... Um, these were $26 at the market. I don't know if she charges more online for these or not, but I just love this color. The, just the way the color varies a little bit. This is kettle or hand dyed, 85% um, Southwest. I'm sorry, Southwest. I've been flying Southwest. Superwash, <laughs> Merino, and 15% Donegal. Donegal are those little, little flecks of color, but just the way the... Um, you know, it's basically kind of primary-ish colors, but with the flecks of the yellow and the pink and the blue with the green. I, I That's all I needed to see. And I was, okay, I was smitten. That's coming home. And let me show you something else I got. This is from some, some designers online called Freddie Goat. So Freddie Goat, thank you so much. As, um, yeah, yeah, anyway. She, she gave me a hand crocheted. Does anybody know what this is? It's a beignet. And because they gave me this, I had to go find where these things were in the market. And on Sunday, I did find the beignets. They came three in a little thing, and they were delicious. I was going to save them for later. You know, eat one and then save the rest. But I decided that the first one tasted so good that I wasn't saving anything for later. And they were... I was later told that you did, I made a big good decision because these are best eaten fresh. And I was stuck in a major downpour rainstorm. I was at a place called the Beignet Cafe. 
and it was um where was it it, it was not too far from the French Quarter, and um, I got a bowl of, what did I get? I, I can't think of it. It, it was really, really good. My, my daughter-in-law loves to make uh, is it jambalaya. I got a bowl of jambalaya. Best, best, um, best sausage I've ever had. Really, really tasty, and I like the spicy thing. So, so Freddie Go, thank you so much for my beignet that will never ever go bad on me I can just stick it back actually let me just stick it right over here just does a remember remembrance of you guys and um, so anyway let me show you something else ah uh, I don't know if you guys got to see the video but I'm really excited to show you this guys yay um I brought you guys were so encouraging and I thank you for your comments um, you just have no, you probably do have an idea how much nerves can get involved whenever you're doing a crochet contest for speed. And um, anyway, brought the first place home again. Yay. And I ended up with um, $75, um, which was the prize money, which went for my, partly for my cab getting back to the airport. And you want to see the winning crochet hook? Ta-da. Um, this is Susan Bates comes through in a pinch again. Yay. So was really glad that I could get through this. Um, I remember the last time I did this, it was three years ago, came in third. And part of the problem was my yarn got tied in a big knot and I just sat there and unknotted the yarn <laughs> instead of crocheting. So fell a little bit behind, but this year I was very careful. And I think being in a humid environment, the yarn, with static electricity that I had trouble with in New Hampshire didn't happen because the, as you know, uh, or maybe you don't know, I don't know, the humidity tends to dispel um, the electrical charges of static electricity so that when yarn is laying on top of itself, because we are able to pull off the yarn, and I pulled off quite a bit, and it was nice and neat and then just kind of laid it across the chair next to me so I didn't have to, you know, pull on the, the ball while I was trying to crochet. And the yarn just came off flawlessly. And I think it was the humidity in the room was my friend. So yay for humidity. <laughs> um, well, let me go ahead and get back to say hey to some of you all. Um, we have Sandra Harper. And thank you, thank you, Sandra, for the congrats on that. And um, so glad you could join us from, a, uh, oh, then we have Sharon from, a very warm Northern Ireland. Wow. Well, welcome, Sharon. That, that is great to have you with us. Um, your country has been such an inspiration in my designs from the very beginning. And Stephanie wants to know, are we having music today? No, I'm going to have to pass on that. I'm having a little bit of a challenge just talking this morning. And I hope I don't, my cough doesn't bother you too much. But next week, I'm going to try to do something, uh, try to do something new. If I can, we'll see how much energy I have left. Um, what you guys deserve, you deserve a lot. Um, and I can tell you, we did get a chance to do uh, three, <coughs> excuse me, three songs in the marketplace. I would love, love, love um, doing music with my friend Jennifer Ryan. And she was able to act out the Ripping Out is Hard to Do song. And we did a couple of other songs that were a lot of fun. So, um, yeah, that was just so much fun to kind of liven up the place a little bit, you know, even though it's just kind of wacky, weird, but hey, it was fun. That's the goal. Um, let's see. Ooh. Oh, thank you, Archer Nace. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm working on it big time. Um. Oh, Stephanie says she just purchased the Celtic Mandala Throw. Can't wait to get started this weekend. Well, definitely check with the video on that one, Stephanie, because that has a lot of tricky stitches in it. Mm. We have Angie from Chile. Welcome. My goodness. That's so wonderful. And Denise and Karen from Oklahoma. And um, is it Johannes? from the Netherlands, Johannes Creations from the Netherlands. Wow, I wish you best. I hope your, your business is going well, my friend. And um, 
<laughs> Archer and Ace says, yay, Speedy. You know what was interesting? Um, people were asking me about that. And um, you know the one thought that I had to go through my mind when they said, you know, ready, set, go. I'm looking at the deer outside in my yard. As long as they stay away from my flowers, we're good. Um, yeah, deer, squirrel. <laughs> anyway, there's a deer. There is a deer outside, and she has twin fawns, and they're absolutely gorgeous. And they're out. I can look at them and see them right now. And just want to make sure they stay away from the front of my house, where I have my flowers. Other than that, they can they can roam the grounds freely anywhere else. Um, but anyway, getting back to the, the speed contest... The one thing that I found I had to do is just breathe and, and just calm down and just say, just go normal. Just go normal. Um, don't try to rush because the minute you try to rush these stitches, you can't you can't get the things in the in the loops or anything. I promise you that there's enough adrenaline, you know, flowing in your system when you're doing stuff like that. Probably enough to. Um, generate the hotel's air conditioning system or something. I mean, there's just a lot of energy um, going through those fingers, it, too much even. So just having to calm it down and just say, just do normal crochet. And and, and that's basically, I think, how it happened. Uh, but anyway, I know there was one gal there that I know she was faster than me. I, I and, and, and I know for the record that this was just the fastest crocheter on that one day amongst those people. I know there's probably people, plenty of people out there who can run circles around this. And I, I totally get that. I'm not trying to, you know, toot my horn or anything like that. I'm, I'm very much aware that there are very many gifted people out there in the world. But there was one gal, her name was Yvette. She was, she was amazing. And, and she was just, you know, just really, really fast. Um, but, but she told me afterwards, she said, the adrenaline is what threw her because with the adrenaline and everything during the actual crochet time, it that messes with you. I mean, if you're sitting at your home and, and you could probably do what I did and, um, but it's, it's a little different when you're sitting in front of people and everybody's watching you and then somebody is live streaming it and saying, no pressure, but we're live streaming. Don't worry. No pressure. <laughs> um, so, so anyway, uh, but that, that was a lot of fun. It was fun to bring it back. Um, uh, just again for one more year and, and hopefully we can hang on to it for, for a little while. Um, we have Gilda from Brazil. Hey Gilda and hey Hannah, thank you so much for being there and making this a very welcoming place. Um, we missed you when you weren't here a couple weeks ago. Uh, and Judy wants to know, Oh, she's checking in with Hannah. Good for you. Um, we have Denise from Canada. And let's see, S.C. Cunningham from Dallas, Georgia. I didn't know there was a Dallas, Georgia. Wow, that's cool. Um, things you don't know, you learn. Uh, let's see. We have D. Marty. Hey, D. Marty, it's good to have you with us. And, um, and Kelly Hart and Marie and Harriet Cutter, so good to have you. Thank you for your encouragement. I did see some of that over the um, the, the little bit of time I could get on social media when I was at the conference. Um, I tried to post things where I could, but I just could not respond um, very timely. Uh, so thanks for your grace there. And let's see, we have Charlotte from Houston. Um, oh, yay! She says, hello from Houston, Texas. This was my first CGOA conference, and it was great. Yay, Charlotte. So glad you could come. So, um, and uh, I, I just want to encourage you all, if you've never been to something like this, um, definitely definitely think about going. And I understand health is an issue for a lot of people in our demographic, but I still think it's worth considering. So um, so just just think about it. I know it's an investment, um, but you know, we invest in a lot of other stuff that doesn't bring us nearly as much fun. So, uh, and as soon as I find out where it's going to be next year, if it's going to be next year, I'll let you know, I promise. Um, cause I'm excited to find out. I kind of have an idea where it's going to be if we hold the conference, but, um, so I'll let you know as soon as, 
as we find out. And it's within driving distance for me, so I'm excited about that. Um, we have Dawn, says so she's working on the colorful cables throw blanket. So the tutorial is great. I love to hear that. <laughs> this is the first real textured blanket or throw I'm doing. I love it so far. Well, good, Dawn. And if there's a a, a stitch or something you just don't like, you could, the, the secret is you can substitute something else on that one. So, I mean, that was basically a sampler, just kind of a throw everything at you at once and just see how you do with it. Um, but I did have a lot of fun. That was at the very beginning of the pandemic. And um, I started that, uh, yeah, it was in January. I mean, it was um, before the shutdown, but very, very dangerously close right before and it was close enough to where um, our supply chain was affected for that one. But anyway. Hmm. Yeah, sorry about your dad, Kelly. She says she lost her dad back in November 2012. No, it doesn't get easier. Um, I understand that one for sure. Hope you're doing better. Um, oh, Archer Nay says, I'm so excited for Pittsburgh. I hope you are well, and God will pour his healing down on you. Yes, I, I'm i feeling much better. I really am. It's just um, my stamina is just has, it's just not what it needs to be. So I just, just hope I can get past that. It, it, it's still early. I mean, this is still um, the end of the first week. I'm technically outside of the contagious uh, window, whatever. Um, but I don't feel like doing anything or going anywhere, so I'm not going anywhere. So you guys don't have to worry. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, yay. Sheila says she's going to be taking the Big and Bold Cables class in Pittsburgh. Yay! That is one of my favorite classes to teach. Um, partly because it's it's easy. I mean, once you understand the basics of the first stitch, the others are a piece of cake. Well, for most people. So I, I'm really excited about that. And I just love, love, love the way the cables come out with these. Um, oh, thank you, Harriet. Um, yes, thank you. Yeah, I hope you don't mind. I'm just sipping on my tea here. <laughs> um, and thank you guys for your prayers. I certainly could use it. Well, let me go ahead and show you. <coughs> Excuse me. Some things I got from the conference. These were giveaways. Um, as you know, I'm a Susan Bates girl, but I was real thankful the the Furls uh, company was a big sponsor of the um, conference. So what that means is everybody got this beautiful canvas bag. And let me show you some of this stuff. Well, let me show you. Um, this is this is something I got for the fastest fingers. One of the um, vendors there called what, what is she called? Uh, hold on. Let me get, let me get the card. Uh, I just want to get her information. She's a really, really sweet gal. She's from Georgia. She's from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I just want to get her card because I remember buying pins from her. Let me show you. She has these beautiful crochet pins. Um, okay, where to put my glasses? Okay, Shop Shanny, spelled C-H-A-N-N-Y, peacecorner.com. Let me just put this in the group chat, okay? In the chat here. Okay, I put her, okay, I put her um, email in there. But this is um, a a clam opening and inside the clam are little balls of yarn that are sparkly. Isn't that beautiful? She has some of the most creative things and um, some beautiful beaded stitch markers. I look forward to using those. And this is just, this is just the prize that she gave me. And this is so sweet. Um, some little, little pearls that I could use in crafting and some beautiful yarn here. Let's see. Some hand dyed yarn from Roswell, Georgia. Brooke Bastian is the owner. 
So some little yarn samples and um, a sticker with the, again, the yarn in, instead of pearls inside there and a beautiful pen. So this was a lot of fun. And um, again, she had some beautiful, beautiful pins. I think I showed some to you from when I came back from Colorado. Um, they had this really cute one that was a picture of an airplane and it was an airplane on the pin and like little balls of yarn in all the windows of the plane, which was cute. Okay, here are some of the freebies that we got at the conference. I got some of the Bernat Softy Cotton. This is 60% cotton, 40% acrylic, uh, 254 yards per ball. So I got a couple in this color and some more in this color. Let me put these down here. And this is the leftover yarn from the speed contest. And here's a sample of Wanderer. It's a boundless poten potential Wanderer acrylic yarn. This is the Furls brand acrylic. I didn't know they made yarn too. So Furls apparently has acrylic yarn available. I've never used it, but it, it does look really kind of kind of nice, nice sheen to it. It feels thicker than the Caron yarn, but it has that characteristic sheen that a lot of the um, the Caron yarn can sometimes have. I bet this is pretty nice stuff. And a ball of Super Saber brushed. Okay, this is, I believe, 100% acrylic. This looks like it'd be interesting fuzzy yarn. Uh, my, my initial thoughts are, I've never used this before, but my initial thoughts are, first of all, does it pill and how badly? But it does, it is an interesting idea. I didn't even know they had this stuff available. So I have to do some swatching with that at some point. And King Cole Giza Cotton. And this is 100% Giza Mercerized Cotton. And this, I believe, is a very, like a fingering weight yarn. I haven't used King Cole yarns in a long time. I remember sampling them at one point, but never really worked with them too much. Mostly because it's a UK company. Um, let's see what else is in here. This is fiber wash, okay, for delicates, or you can use this on your sweaters. So that's kind of nice. And there's magic in this marker. The iron-on ink markers allow you to transfer designs from plain paper to polyester blanks. I'll have to, I'll have to look at that. I'm not sure what I could use that for, but if that washes out, that could be very helpful. I'll have to look at the information and learn more. Um, oh wow, and this is the sizing guide, blankets with heart. And what this is kind of helpful, a crochet blanket size guide to show um, the inches, the width and length of standardized sizes and everything from crib, yeah, a lovey blanket, which I guess little handheld 12 by 12, all the way to a king size bed. Hmm. Very interesting. And what else do we have in here? I told you there was a lot of stuff and everybody got one of these at the conference. Um, okay, and this was a 20% off at the Marketplace booth for a Furls hook. Okay, and Furls were, I will tell you, they were very, very generous. Um, so here's, here's a little thing that came. Uh, this is empty, but this is a needle holder. So if you want to put needles or even your yarn needles in here and put the top on. Um, I take care of mine in a different way in my bag, but that is kind of a cool little thing here. Two more things left to show you in the bag. Okay, this is a G hook by Clover. Very nice ergonomic style hook. And it's not exactly uh, the size hook that I, the type of hook that I would use, but I think this one might be more usable than let's say the boy hooks for me. I think I might be able to use this one. Um, 
So that's encouraging. And da, 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 when we were at the um, at the banquet, um, Jennifer Ryan answered a question correctly, and so our entire table got a furls hook. And this is a furls hook um, designed specifically for Crochet Guild of America in the New Orleans colors. So isn't that beautiful? And um, <coughs> it's a size K or 6.5 millimeter. And I think if I can get a way to manage my thumb to keep the head from turning, I might be able to even use this and if you can see the head of that. Well, anyway, so I'm looking forward to that. This will be my first time trying to use a furls hook. Um, as you know, my muscle member is pretty set, but this, this feels really nice and I just love the sparklies. Can you, I don't know if you can see all the sparkles or not, but uh, on the video. So that's what was in the bag. Oh, and one more thing. Clover gave us all a tape measure. And if you were in my class, you got a tape measure from me. Do I have one here? No, they're, they're way over. I think I have one behind my thing here, but so I gave all my class those as well. So you can never have too many of those, trust me. I've even had to dip into my box where I have hundreds of them. And, and I just, they're all over my house. I, I know, what a mess, right? Uh, I just don't like being without them. Oh, I have to show you what I got um, when I went out and about on Sunday and I went, um, this is right as I was coming on the, the, um, the French Quarter and I met this really nice young man who's an artist and so I bought a couple of prints from him. So I just, being a musician, a wind instrumentalist for many years, um, that's what I studied in school. I had to get something with the horns and um, so I got this beautiful picture and I thought this would look really nice with this one as well kind of a pair and once I took these out of my bag and I and I looked into my kitchen see this color right up here that's the color on my kitchen walls these are like so gonna match my my decor perfectly so I'm you know really really looking forward to getting these framed and um, I will say that when I was walking around the French Quarter this is my first time in New Orleans. It was the first time for me to see the Mississippi River. Yeah, I've been sheltered, right? Um, and it was just really cool to hear so many people playing trumpet and saxophone and these non-electronic instruments. Uh, I, a lot of people I know can't make a living anymore playing these kinds of instruments, unfortunately, and, and this, this affects my generation. Um, because everything is electronic and computerized and, and quite frankly dehumanized um, and I'm not against some of that music I do use some of that music in my videos occasionally but um, how refreshing it was for me being a wind instrumentalist to just hear these people playing these um, playing their horns and enjoying it very much and, I mean I would went walking down uh, where a lot of people were eating at this one area but I must have seen five or six um, different groups out playing just one after the other after the other and it was just it was a lot of fun except for the rain that came you know it was it was really nice being out there and, and seeing that let me go ahead and take another sip here I think we're about down to the the pure honey part which is really good mm. oh thank you Harriet yeah I, I love these prints um and I just loved it. It was a, you know, a, a very nice young man, and um, I know he's not getting rich fast. And it's just, just really nice to be able to support people in their craft. He's obviously very gifted. And um, let me see. His name is. I think it's Ashton. Is it Ashton Jefferson? Okay, here we go. Um, Ashton's art. I'll go ahead and put his, his website in here just in case anyone's interested. Ashtonsartwork.com. I'll just put it in there just in case anybody wants to check it out. So, all right. 
Let's see, is there anything else I'm forgetting? Um, I'm sure there is. Um, looking around at my mess on my desk. Oh, let me show this to you. Um, this is a tradition with me. I got a new pin. I'm going to show you my pins. These are so much fun. I've been collecting these since 2011. Um, I try to get one at every conference. I've not been to every single conference because I was not able to travel to a few of them, but been to quite a, been to a lot of them. And I also have my Craft Yarn Council certification pins there. Um, CGOA. The first one I went to was right here. It was in Greensboro, North Carolina, 2011. Lots and lots of fun. Oh, Sheila, thank you so much. You're going to bump us up to $120, my friend. Thank you so much. Um, let me go ahead and write that down. You guys are so generous. Thank you, thank you. And uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, to my lives, what we do with the um, Super Chat money is we alternate each each time we get a donation between um, either Shriners Hospital for Children or Rancho 3M. The last time the donations exceeded $100, um, it went to Rancho 3M, which is a um, an orphanage and a Christian school in Guadalupe, Mexico, which is probably the one of the poorest places I've ever been in my entire life. Um, but a wonderful work is going on there. Uh, many, many kids are being provided for and taken care of in an amazing way. I got to see that up close and personal. Spent the week there in 2006 with my daughter, Becky. Uh, got sick that trip too. <laughs> um, but from something different. And, uh, but anyway, um, so this time around, it will go to Shriners Hospital for Children. And we do have uh, a couple of people in our uh, community here online um, who have been um, patients there, Esther. Um, and you remember Bobby, he's been a patient at uh, Shriners as well as my mother-in-law um, uh, over 93 years ago. She was a patient uh, for pol with polio at Shriners and they helped her considerably. So good, good work that's been going on a long time. We want to help support that where we can. Huh, Sandra said that she married into a Cajun family. So gumbo is a popular meal. Wow, very cool. Yeah, there are so many good things on the menu, Sandra. I just I couldn't eat them all. But I, I do remember my, my daughter-in-law is really good at cooking jambalaya. So I, I need to try their jambalaya just to compare. And it did not disappoint. It was really good. I was finally glad, you know, to, to get some real Cajun food there. And I, I, I could live there. I mean, as far as the food goes, I as far as the humidity goes, uh, I don't know. But um, as far as the food goes, I really, really did enjoy that. Uh, <coughs> so Sharon says that she likes the, um, the Giza cotton. She says she made a sundress and it turned out lovely and has washed very well. That's good to know. Especially the washing part, Sharon. Thank you. That's a, that's a good good thing to hear about yarn. Um, wow. I thank you, Glenda, for your blessing there. And, um, yeah, I, I hope I didn't forget anybody. Okay, we have Cindy Songer. She's just found your channel a couple weeks ago, looking for directions for the Celtic weave. Almost done. I'm ending up with more width than you have, but it is working out okay. Uh, yeah. And Cindy, if you, um, welcome, welcome to our channel. Welcome to this community. This is a great bunch of people. I will say that right off the get go. And, um, if you ever want to send me, you know, pictures of something and you have questions about it, um, just send it to me, bonniebayatme.com. I do respond eventually. Um, and I'm the only one answering that. It's not, um, not a hireling somewhere else. I promise you, um, we're not that big, not yet, but, um, but, uh, yeah, Hannah is, is one of my right hand people. And, um, uh, and I do, my sister does help me with my translations, but it's, it's by and large me. So, um, so just send me pictures if you have any questions and I'll see if I can help, help you. You may even just need to um, size down your hook, you know, just to bring down the gauge a little bit and you might be fine. Ah, uh, and we have Ann, Ann 
Angel Angelis um, from Yonkers, New York. Hey, well, welcome to Yonkers. I was driving through your neck of the woods at the end of the last conference I went to, last CGOA conference in um, uh, up in New Hampshire. I drove through all through New York City unintentionally, believe me. Went through the Bronx and probably Yonkers too. I, I, I was in places I didn't think I'd ever see of New York, but it was fun. Um, wow. So I, I hope I don't, didn't miss anybody. Um, and thank you, Miss Wanda, for your prayers. I so could use those. Um, yeah, well, let me go ahead and show you. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Next, this Monday, I'm coming out with a stitch video on how to crochet the large braided cable. So that's this coming Monday. The Monday after that, I'm hoping to bring this to you. I wore this to the conference and absolutely loved wearing this. This is made with um, two different yarns, which is one reason why I've, I've held it back a bit because I, I wanted it to be just one kind of unified yarn, but you know, I just didn't want this to just sit in my closet. So I got it out and wore it and really enjoyed it. This is 100% cotton. Um, the This part is by a company called Earth Yarns, U-R-T-H, not, not as in the planet, but U-R-T-H. Um, it's hand dyed. Um, again, it's, uh, okay, number two weight, sport weight, and and the bottom part is, is a cotton, a number two. You might be able to substitute, you know, whatever you have on hand. Um, but this is called Euro Baby Cotton. It's really, really nice cotton yarns. I got these from Lana's store um, over in Columbia, Maryland. And uh, she helped me pick these out. And I just, you know, again, I w wish I could have made them all one brand, but I didn't. And um, I really, really, really like this cotton. It's a little bit thicker than the uh, sock weights that I've been using. Um, so it does go a little bit faster. Um, the only thing about this yarn is it doesn't have the elasticity that um, that the the universal yarn pop sock um, yarn has. But but it's but anyway very nice. And this will be coming out. This is easier. There's no cabling here. This is just um, clusters of four double crochets um, worked. And the self-striping yarn does all the work. Let me show you the back. It even looks a bit different than the front. So it just is whatever the yarn does, which is which is interesting. So and if you're not into chaos with the collar like this, you can easily get two or three colors that you like of the number two cotton, and then you can control you know the striping effect yourself which is another thought that I had to do, or even just make it solid. Although I think this is just a really fun way to put a pop of color in there. Mm, so my hot tea is now cold tea. Still tastes good though. All right, so um, I have even more yarn to show you. Um, the Knit Crate came. This is the... July. It's the end of the month. Now I did go online and look up the exact price because I've been guessing at this for way too long because of, you know, the, I think the value of the dollar and other things constantly changing. And we all know that the price of fuel has, has made everything go up. So this has gone up a little bit as well. This is $33.99 a month plus $7.95 shipping and handling. Okay, so that, if you're domestically, if you're in the U.S., that comes to a grand total of everything, $41.94, which is, honestly, is still cheaper than buying things off the shelf. Um, I just want full disclosure here on this. If you're an international customer, it's $11.95. This is a U.S. dollars for shipping and handling, so it's just about $3 more, 7 it's four dollars more, so that'd be forty-five ninety-four U.S. dollars if you're an international customer. So what Knit Crate is, I, I've talked about this many times. It is a month by month uh, mail order club. You, they send it to you. 
And if honestly, if you decide that you don't want to continue, you just go online and you just say, okay, I'm done. Bye. Um, but if you want, if you like getting fun packages in the mail that have yarn in them, and this is quality yarn. So just to let you know, and if you wanted to even just give it a try for, for one month, um, you can use the coupon code down in the uh, video description below with, with the link. It's at the very bottom of the video description. But if you use the coupon code Bonnie20, B-O-N-N-I-E-2-0, you can get 20% off your first. So 20% off of, you know, $33 is pretty significant. That's going to save you, you know, seven bucks or more. So um, anyway, so the... The theme of this particular box is Sunscape. And let's see what they sent us today. This is pretty. <coughs> wow. Let me show you this. This is this is beautiful. This feels amazing. So why does this feel amazing? Oh, this is 50% um, Superwash Merino Wool, 50% Tencel. Tencel is based off of um, like tree products. Um, and they are distilled down chemically, I believe, but it is, it is still a breathable fiber made from trees. It's the fingering weight. Each of these is 400 yards. So you have a total of 800 yards, which may be enough to make me a summer lace sweater. You know, Bonnie's summer lace top, this might be enough. I need to go look at the yardage again on what I record, but I think I might be able to eke it out with this, which would be a really fantastic color to wear in the summer. Um, wow, 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 nice. And what else did they put in here? Oh, this is cute. These are cool. This is one of those bags that you can wear as a backpack, you know, kind of a, an easy drawstring bag. Just put it on your back and forget about it. These are great too if you're going shopping at the grocery store, um, especially up where we are where you have to pay for bags. So, I mean, if you bring something like this, you can put, you know, put some you know, small grocery items in. Or if you're out yarn shopping or somewhere and you just want to stick that in the back and not worry about it, nice. So that is Knit Crate. And um, I've, been enjoying, I've been enjoying getting their yarn. It's, I, I, I'm not paid to say anything you know extra special about this or anything. They just asked me to evaluate it, but... Quite honestly, I have not been disappointed in the quality. It has, they have lived up to their reputation. Um, there's no hype there on my part. I don't do hype very well. I'm not an actress. I tried once, but it didn't work out. <laughs> they, they let me work something backstage. They said, no, you need to stay off the stage. And okay, I'm good. So anyway, um, let me see. Hannah may have some questions for me. Um, thank you, Hannah, for sending these to me. Uh, which book is your newest book? Um, okay, that's a good question. My absolute newest would be right here. I mean, as far as latest publication, it's not. It's more like a leaflet, I guess. Um, this is my newest. It has, I believe, six. Is it six patterns? I should know, right? Yeah. Yeah, six. Six texturized um, crochet patterns, and this does include the video tutorials for it. Um, most of these are available on my public YouTube channel, with the exception of one, which I'm still trying to I'm trying to keep safe from stealers out there and pirates. Yes, that's a thing. So this is the only one that's not out there with the tutorial. The tutorial for this, this is um, Bonnie's Winter Cable Throw. It has the Saxon Cable, which I'm kind of keeping a little more in reserve for a time. Um, it does include some nice um, instruction. And like I said, the complete video tutorial is there. I am working on something new coming. 
Um, but I, I don't have a publication date on that just yet. I'm shooting for October. Didn't count on getting sick. Um, even though I'm not totally incapac incapacitated from this by the grace of God, um, it is slowing me down quite a bit. So that's why I'm, you know, like I said earlier in the video, I'm pulling back from that baseball game. I think just the added um, six hours on the road would not be a good thing for me right now because I want to be as close to 100% for you guys um, at the festival. I want to be able to teach and to do an excellent job. And in order for me to do that, I'm going to have to forego the trip. And again, let me know if you're in Pittsburgh and you want my ticket. Just the first person I get emailed, the first one that contacts me will get first consideration. Okay, so just to let you all know that again as a reminder. Um, hey, yeah, Hannah says Johnny's in the chat. Hey, Johnny, good to have you. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm so glad that you could join us. I know you've been working... Working, working, working hard. But uh, for those of you who don't know, Johnny's an old, an old time friend to our chat. Well, as uh, well, if you consider maybe two, three years old, <laughs> uh, old. But um, anyway, bad choice of word. Now you know what I mean. Um, a good friend, I should say. Um, anybody from Florida, that part of Florida is my friend, no matter what. So um, yeah, so good to have you in the chat. And um, okay, okay. Um, okay, Olia has a good question. Um, no, there is not a DVD in the book. There is a link, a video link, um, to where you can get the uh, video tutorials. So almost all the video tutorials for these already are already on my home page. If you go to my home page, just click on the little that little picture of my channel, which looks something like this. No. <laughs> And, um, and you click on that and um, that'll take you to my home page. And then if you look up playlist, um, hit playlist, and then you can look up um, the playlist for the texturized, Aaron, Aaron Celtic texturized throws. And there's a whole list. There are many of them in there and these are included, except with the exception of the one, which is um, not there. No, I can go ahead and put a shameless plug in for my watch channel. John reminded me of this because he's been a big supporter of, of this, and I so appreciate that so much. Um, I do have a, a paid subscriber site where you can watch most of my videos, or at least the best content that I have to date without commercials, without spam, without interruptions, telling you to buy, 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 and know if you view anything on that channel, um, none of your information is categorized. It's not sold. It's I don't keep or do anything with any of your personal information. Never have, never will. Um, only, only if you um, are asking for help to find some things, I will maybe try to help you with that. But um, this is not um, my um, my watch channel is not like like this channel. I mean, none of your none of your personal information is ever sold. And there are some perks whenever I release new designs, you do get a complimentary um, copy of that downloadable pattern, which is normally, if you're not a part of that, they are sold in my online um, pattern store at Lovecrafts and some on Etsy. Um, so anyway, it's, it's a fun, fun channel. It's just been a really fun thing that my husband and son helped to set up for me. It's just another way to keep some of the nicer patterns that are not on my, I have some things that are not on my YouTube channel. Let me show you another one. It's, it just so happens to be sitting out here. This is a really nice fall design. I released it last year. Um, let me see if I get the right side up. Okay. This can be worn as a stole or as an asymmetrical poncho. And again, it features the, uh, another version of the Saxon cable. And this design, again, this is on the watch channel. It's not on the public YouTube channel. Again, just trying to keep some of these designs just out of the theft zone just for a little while. Because I know eventually things do get stolen in strange places. But um, so just to let you know that there are some special, special things um, on that watch channel. I also do some behind the scenes 
um, videos every now and then when I can. I haven't been able to do some in a while. It's just been a crazy, crazy busy summer. But I'm hoping to be able to, you know, wind down and, and do some of those. I'm going to be doing some, you know, if, if it works out, some international travel uh, coming in the fall. And, you know, I will try to make some videos and post things up there for my watch subscribers. I'm, I'm really excited to happy to do that. So i um, really looking forward to that. It's been a few years since we've been able to, to do anything like that. And it's kind of a late celebration for my husband's 60th birthday, which happened a while back. <laughs> so we're going to finally be able to maybe celebrate that. It's a little bit overdue. So anyway, um, a oh, great question, Frida. Um, Hannah sent me your question. It says, um, what do you find the most fun to make? Blankets or clothing? Or what do you enjoy the most? Hmm. I kind of enjoy a lot of different things. Um, I think <coughs> if I had to just pick one, as far as the work that I have to do, probably throws, you know, Afghans and throws and things like that. Because they're easy and it's just I can just sit down and just breeze through it and I really enjoy that um the other thing is I don't have to worry about going back and sizing it for all these different sizes um whenever I make um tops and I, I but the thing is I love making tops for me because I can make them to fit me and I don't have to write it out but if I'm writing a pattern for a top like this um is challenging because there's a lot of math involved. I have to get out my eighth grade uh, algebra skills and beyond, and my ratios and all that, and have to do a lot of a lot of uh, mathematical work sizing it up. And, and quite frankly, that's a lot of work. But if I'm making a throw, it's just get that hook and and go. And no matter what what the pattern is, I just um, there's just something therapeutic and relaxing about that. But I, I, I'm trying to have my cake and eat it too here. When it comes to a lot of these, I design them in such a way so that they are fun, easy repeats so that you're not pulling your hair out, you know, over some of these stitches. Now, some of these, this, the one on the white, um, the white cable blanket, I mean, if you're just learning cable, stay away from that one for a little while because um, that one's not, not in the easy camp. Um, but it's like one of these things when you do something long enough, if you can conceptualize it, you can do it and it doesn't require as much brain power and that's where I am with some of those but but yeah I, I can make enemies quickly if I if I tell a beginner to start with this one and then you know if I never want someone to talk to me again I'll say here start with this and they're like no 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 don't do that build your skills and then come come to these so okay good question um are we Olia wants to know are we if I'm saying that right are we able to make something from your patterns and sell? Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, absolutely. The only thing that I ask when when people do this, and a lot of people do sell my things, they, they, they make my patterns and sell them on Etsy. The only, the only thing that I ask kindly is that if you would just give me designer credit where it's appropriate. I mean, I'm not asking for money. You don't owe me anything. Once you buy that pattern, you can do whatever you want with that pattern. Uh, and quite frankly, if you do well on Etsy selling your design and you just say this is a Bonnie Barker pattern, that actually helps me. So, um, you know, there, no money needs to be exchanged. It's nothing like that. But yeah, you definitely have permission to, to use to sell them. The only thing that I don't like is when people take my designs and then they copy the pattern and they sell it as their own. That's a violation of copyright. That's against the law. Um but if you're making something and selling it and it's your handiwork, absolutely. You know, I just, I just ask, just, just please let people know, you know, if they ask, you know, this is a Bonnie Barker design. That's all I need to know. It's just like when you're wearing, you know, your Gloria Vanderbilt jeans, you have Gloria's name on the back pocket. You don't have to put my name on it, but you know what I'm saying? Um, you can't take credit. Oh, I made these jeans. I was like, no, you didn't. <laughs> but, um, anyway, that's a little, I guess that's a little different, but, um, anyway, well, it is 104, and my voice is telling me that I probably need to go take a break. Um, I'm sorry if I didn't get to your comments in the chat. Um, I tried to get everybody. If there's anybody that's that's brand new, I'm sorry if I missed you. Cassie Frida, 
Uh, yeah, I saw the question. Yeah, Hannah sent that to me. Um, oh, thank you, Cindy. Um, you're so sweet. Um, it's amazing what just a little bit of hard work can do. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, let me just make sure. I think I got, <coughs> I think I got everybody. Yeah, yeah, I'll leave that. Yeah, yeah, people do, people do strange things. I mean, I've had entire books compromised online, but I, I won't go there. I'm not, there's just too much negativity out there, and I, there's no reason to go over that. Just, just do the right thing, and things will, yeah, just, yeah, but thank you for asking. That's really nice of you, but definitely, yeah, definitely sell these things if you can, and, and when you sell these things, especially if you're making a throw like this, by golly, keep track of your hours, and, and don't give your stuff away, um, Ask what you think you're worth, and you're probably worth more than you think. So when it comes to things like that, um, I know there's a certain amount of you can only ask as much as what the market will bear. I totally understand the economics of that, which is one reason why I don't sell a lot of my handcrafts on Etsy, because quite frankly, I, I, I don't, you know, working for below minimum wage would not really benefit me in any way um, currently. I mean, it doesn't really... By the time I pay taxes on it and everything else, I mean, as a as a contractor, so to speak, because I'm anyway I'm getting complicated here. But just ask what you're worth, okay? Um, figure out how much it took you in materials, how much time it took you to make these things, um, how much money is it going to cost you to ship? Because I know sometimes you can get more Etsy customers if you offer free shipping. But you need to have that calculated into your price already. That's how that works, okay? It just makes it easier for the purchaser to know that there's a one one kind of fee. But if you can get a really rockin' photograph of what you've made that really represents it well, um, don't be afraid to, to ask on the higher side. Now, I hope, by me saying this, I hope I don't just ruin everybody's business. That's not what I'm trying to do. You don't want, you can't be priced out of the market too. So this is where it's a little touchy, but, um, but I have seen online where people have offered, um, what would take me between 30 and 40 hours of work and, and they offer it for two to $300. And, um, I, I don't know of anybody that can live on that kind of a wage. It's not a living wage. So definitely price your stuff for what you're worth. That's that's what I mostly want to encourage. And the more people start doing that, raising the value of their work, it's going to raise the value of, of everybody else who is, who is um, hopefully, of people who were selling these things. But, but anyway, uh, I went on too long about that. Well, let me go ahead. I just wanted to end. I wanted to read, uh, just a reminder, this was on my mind this morning, so I'm just going to read to you Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. Some of my favorite proverbs I've had memorized, but I, I went ahead and wrote them down so that I, I would have it for me to read. And from the Old Testament, and it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path, make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. I hope you all have a fantastic week, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys here next Friday. God bless. Bye-bye.